Hey everyone, it's Sky here and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to get started on our May color along. So this color along was requested by Casey. I think I'm saying your name right. I'm pretty sure you said that's how it was pronounced. If not, I do apologize again. Um, so she requested that we color from Steampunk Darlings and the girl that she requested <clears throat> was Quinn. So that's this one here. So I am pretty excited. This one's going to be quite a bit different as most of the elements are um, basically the bits around and then the Hannah Lynn girl is like the smallest element of the page and it's going to be interesting because this calls for lots of metal, maybe some cool techniques to kind of make this stand out. So while as always we'll be mostly using Prismacolor Premiers, I probably will use some other things in here, maybe some acrylic paint, um, probably some gel pens, some white pens, that kind of thing. As always though, if you don't have that stuff, you can always make do with what you do have, so don't feel discouraged if you don't have exactly what I have. You can make a beautiful piece of art with anything that you have. So I'm just going to grab a couple sheets of paper here to put beneath. And as most of you know, or I assume pretty much all of you by now, it's to protect the pages behind. Even though since I'm using pencil right now, it's not going to bleed through, but it's also going to keep me from denting the pages behind. So we want to try and protect the tooth of the pages. So, I'm not 100% sure what colors I'm going to be using. You guys will know though, because as always, it will have been in the intro. But I do have quite a few colors laid out. Um, I have kind of an idea of how I want to color the metal bits, but at the same time, I'm not quite sure how to actually achieve it. So, it's going to be pretty interesting, a little bit nerve-wracking if I'm honest. So... Hopefully it works out, and I'm sure even if it doesn't turn out exactly how I'm seeing it, it will probably still turn out good. So, let's zoom in and get started. So I think I'm just going to focus on little bits and pieces for now. So I'm going to focus on this part right here first. Actually, maybe let's do... Let's do this. So I think the first color I'm going to come in with, if I can grab it here, is the 90% warm gray. And let's see, I'm going to run this kind of along the bottom and maybe the side here, maybe both sides actually. So I'm just kind of using a medium firm pressure where I want it darker and then I'm just lightening up the pressure and just fading it out. So I know what I want to achieve in my head. I don't think I can really explain it. So I'm hoping it turns out so you guys can kind of see what I mean. But it's kind of like a mix of like bronze and silver metals, I think, is the best way to explain it. Okay, so from there I'm going to grab the 70% warm gray. And I'm just going to continue out from that 90%, kind of blending it in. And fading it out. Now she is underwater, so we don't have to be too particular with our highlights and shadows for the most part. 
So we do have a little bit more room to kind of play around and uh, not worry about it being perfect. But I think I am going to make it a little bit more shadowy on this side, just because I imagine with the angle that she's going down, it might be lighter here because she'd be closer to the top of the water. But other than that, I think everything else could kind of just be however we want it. Okay, so I've kind of got that silver look. I want to try adding that kind of gold, bronze kind of look. So I'm going to come in with the green ochre. I'm just going to bring this over top, not completely going over everything, but just kind of bringing it out a little bit from the grays. And then I'm going to switch to the bronze. I'm just going to finish coloring that in. And I'm just kind of lightly going over. I think I'm going to go over <coughs> everything with the bronze. Sorry, my voice hasn't woken up quite yet. It's kind of a blah and miserable day and it's the weather is definitely affecting my back today, and rain. He's in quite a bit of pain today, too. Okay, so there's that kind of bronzy gold look, so I do like that, so I'll have to remember those colors. And then I think for these two little bits here, let's make them kind of more silver. So I'm going to come in um, again with the 90% warm grey. Sorry if the camera shakes, Miss Lilo is up on the shelf. Okay, I'm going to pause here for some kitty cuddles apparently. <laughs> okay, Miss Lilo is still here but she's kind of out of the way so we'll continue. Unless she wants to be difficult. There, I've got the 90% warm grey on both sides. And then I want to come in with the 70% cool grey. Apparently she does want to be difficult. She's having none of this today. Come on you. You can lay on this side, that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to bring that out and kind of over top of the warm grey. And then fade it out. And actually, let's bring that warm grey back because I kind of want to do the same thing here. So for these little bolts, I am probably going to come in and color those with a metallic gel pen, I think. So if you don't have a metallic gel pen or anything you can use for that, try and not color over them. But since I'm using a gel pen, I'm not going to worry about them. So I'm using quite a firm pressure to really get that color in there. I can still see some white peeking in behind, but once we go over it with the cool gray, um, it should be fairly burnished. So same thing, I'm going to go in over top and bring the cool grey out. She is licking the pencil. She's very weird right now.
But on the plus side, her and the new baby have made quite a bit of progress. She still doesn't quite love her yet, but she tolerates her, so we're getting there. She even gave her a couple of licks on the face the other day. So I think I've got both the 20% warm gray and cool gray, but I think I'm going to opt for the warm gray. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to bring this in. And again, just kind of go over top <coughs> of everything. good start. I think, and I'm not entirely sure how this is going to look, but I really like these two colors and I'll probably do a lighter version of um, this kind of tarnished bronze color. So I think what I'm going to do, because we have all of these different panels, I'm going to do each panel kind of a different color and like make it all mismatched. And in my head it looks really good. Whether it'll actually look good on paper, I guess we'll find out, but I think that's what I'm going to do. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with that bronze color. So I'm going to come in with 90% warm gray again, and I'm just going to put in some shadows. So I'm going to imagine that this piece is kind of overlapping this, so there's going to be a little bit of shadow here, this will be lighter, but here I imagine this metal bar is kind of overlapping this sheet of metal, so I'm going to put in a shadow here, I guess one other thing we could do is we could put shadows in around the bolts too which actually, if our light source is from the top, would actually be on this side. Again, we don't need to be too perfect, but you guys know me, I'm probably going to anyways. So just fading this out just slightly, it's not to come up too far. Put a shadow in on this little I don't know what the word is for this, like porthole or something? Maybe not quite because it looks like it actually opens. I don't think portholes actually open. Could be wrong. I know nothing about ships. And then, let's see. I think this gear would cause a little bit of shadow in some places here. Imagine there'd be a little bit of a shadow here from this little steam pipe there. You know, when Casey requested this, I was like super nervous because I've had this image of this picture in my head and I just, I don't know if I can actually, you know, achieve it the way I want to. But at the same time, sorry, camera's going to shake, Lilo's up there. At the same time, I messed up maybe in my book. I already made sure that we're all in frame. <laughs> I have a bad habit of doing that. Anyways, at the same time, I'm also like super excited to see how it turns out. And I just, I have this feeling that it's going to turn out really good, which is kind of putting me on edge because usually I feel like it's going to turn out awful and then it turns out good. But... We will just have to pray to the color gods that it turns out okay. Okay, at 
think that's pretty good for our darkest shadows. I'll probably come back in over top, but for now I'm going to grab the 70% warm gray. And again, I'm just going to bring this out from these shadows, and I'm going to bring it out quite a ways. Maybe not so much this way though, since we have kind of a smaller kind of area here, but I do want to fill up a good portion of area with these shadows. I don't want it to be too light, because again, we're kind of underwater. Um, things are going to be fairly shadowed. And also, I'm thinking because most of the gears and stuff will probably be a little bit lighter, I really want those to stand out, because they add a really interesting look to the page. I'm going to switch back to the 90% warm gray because I forgot about this thing right here. This would probably cast a shadow too. The more shadows and stuff we put in, the more interesting the page is going to look. So we're back to the 70%. For now I'm just using kind of a medium pressure, bringing the shadows out, kind of adding to them a little bit. Just kind of mapping out where I want the colors to be. So I kind of left this uh, recording this like last minute, it is literally um, the 27th of April right now, <laughs> so I have, let's see, one, counting today, one, two, three, four, five, I have six days to record five parts of this, so it's five hours, give or take, and edit them, or at least the first one. So yeah, so I'm kind of pretty close. <laughs> Do I have to do it that way? No, but that's just my OCD and that's the way that I've always done it. So if I do it differently, it's going to bother me because I have to have the whole page done for the thumbnails, which the first part has to be done by Friday because that's when I upload. So I was going to go with a different request this month out of the... Um, Enchanted Faces book because my version is the pocket sized version. So it would probably be done pretty quick. Oh, you are bad today. But then I noticed that we have five Fridays this month. So usually more detailed pictures are great to do when we have that extra Friday because then we have a little bit of extra play around time. We don't have to rush so much to get it done. It just usually works out better, so have to take advantage of that for sure. Okay, I'm going to sharpen this. Miss Lilo is just being a little nuisance, bless her. <laughs> she is like, she's not having any of this. She keeps grabbing at my arm like, Mom, cuddle me. <laughs> Mom, pay attention. I'm going to sharpen my 90% uh, as well. I want to keep those shadows really dark, so while I do love this 70%, it does take away from the shadows quite a bit. So I'll probably go back in with the 90% after. We'll test it out here, see what it looks like. I'll just finish. I'm just putting a little bit more pressure now. Just adding a little bit more of the 70%. Trying to figure out how far I want to bring it out and stuff. I'm not going too heavy where our darker shadows are going to be because i got to leave some tooth for kind of re-adding them in there. So... 
Let's switch again to the 90% warm. And I'm just, I'm coming in there fairly heavy, really darkening these shadows up, kind of fading it out a little ways. Do you see birdies? Okay, I really like that. I'm going to switch back to the 70% and without going over the darker color, I'm just going to come in and darken up these shadows a little bit more coming out from it. Ten more minutes of recording and then I'm going to take a break to cuddle you, okay? Be good. I promise. <laughs> Usually I can get away with just putting my arm around her and holding her, but she wants my full attention today apparently. And with the 90%, we'll darken up this shadow here. You just have to, don't you? <laughs> oh my goodness, you are bad. Okay, I'll tell you what. You sit right there. I'm done. I'm gonna cuddle the crap out of you, kitty. That sounds terrible. <laughs> okay, back to the warm gray. Trying to fade this out as soft as I can. It's a little bit tricky pretty much from here over though because of the spine of the book.
one nice thing too is I actually like the little bits of white that are showing through the paper because it kind of adds that kind of metal texture which is really going to work for us. So we don't have to go too crazy and get it completely burnished. It's actually better if we don't. Back in with the Okay, hey, there's all our shadows in. It's already starting to come together quite a bit. So what color did we use next? I think we used the green ochre, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna sharpen it up here. I'm going to kind of run the green ochre up into the shadows just a little bit. They're pretty burnished, so I'm not going to go in too heavy. I don't want to wreck the paper, but just enough to give it kind of a tint. I'm going fairly firm until I start fading it out.
there's that. So let's come in with our bronze now. I don't mind that white peeking through, but I'm just going to go over top of anywhere where there's a little bit too much of it. Okay, next I'm going to take the 90% warm gray again here. I'm going to put a little bit in on either side of this. I'm going to put a little bit down at the bottom. I'm not fully burnishing it because I do want this to be a little bit lighter. I want it to kind of stand out. And then a little bit on the gear. And maybe just kind of following the outline for the bottom of these little spiky bits. And then on the inside of this line. And then I'm just going to give this a little bit of a shadow too. Moving on to the 70% cool gray, or is that, yeah, that's the one I want, right? Yeah. I'm just going to lightly go over top of that darker color. I'm going to bring these shadows up a little bit. Fade it out. I'm not burnishing the shadows. I still want them to be a little bit lighter, so I'm probably still going to go over them with a lighter color yet. Which is going to be the... Hmm, let's do the 20% cool gray this time.
Okay, and one last thing. I'm going to grab Jasmine, and this might seem a little bit weird, but I kind of want to tie in some of this silver metal with the bronze kind of metal in the background. So I'm just going to go in on some of it just to give it a little bit of a yellow tint. Not all over the whole thing, just, just little bits. It's just going to add a little bit of extra interest in there, too. There. Super subtle, but really effective. And actually, one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the... I don't know if it's going to work, because I've probably already burnished it. There it is. I'm going to grab my 90% warm gray again. I'm just going to come in on the bottom left side of these little bolts. I'm going to see if I can add a little bit of a shadow to these as well. And then just to make it not look so out of place, I'm going to come in again with the 20% warm gray. Just gonna kind of blend that in a little bit, just really lightly. This is pretty much already burnished, so if I rub at it too much, it's gonna wreck the paper. But there we go. Actually, let's do the exact same thing. These ones here too. I forgot about those. So again, bottom left is going all the way around. There we go. I wonder. I'm just going to take my jasmine here. Yeah, I like that. It only shows up slightly because, again, this whole area is pretty much burnished. But I'm just lightly rubbing the jasmine around. Again, just in kind of those areas where there's a little bit too much white for my liking. It's kind of fogging it up a little bit, which is making it look a little bit more aged, and that's really what I want. I want this to look like an aged, scrappy kind of submarine. I want it to have a lot of character. And then the nice thing about having two pages, or two copies in this book, is when I do this the second time around, I can do a nice shiny submarine. Maybe even like a rose gold submarine, that'd be kind of neat. There, I really like that, especially these gears. Now I'm wondering about doing the whole thing, like I don't think I want to. Okay, so let's move on to this piece here. Make sure I'm in frame. Sorry, don't mind my squeaky chair. I'm just gonna drink the water. Question though, does my chair bother any of you? So I apologize if it does. I'm kind of curious. I don't know if I've ever asked that before. So again, we're coming in with our 90% warm, and we're going to add our shadows first. So since I feel like this piece would be overlapping this one, I'm going to create a little bit of a shadow coming out from underneath it. And then pretty much along the whole side of this, it's going to be shadowed.
be a little bit of a shadow on the left and bottom part of this window just because I want to make it look like this metal is kind of sticking out a little bit, the window frame. And then same thing with these bolts. I want to create shadow to the left and bottom of these as well. Gonna come in with the seventy percent cool. I'm gonna kind of do the same thing that I did for the top. I want the metals to kind of look the same. They're just gonna be different colors. I do really want that aged look. So I'm just going to come in with the 70%. I'm going to slightly go over our darkest gray, bring it out a little bit heavy, and then fade it out. just a little sliver of white along this side here for our lighter, a lighter gray. Not the lightest gray, but Liking where that's going, so I'm going to come back in with the 90% and I'm going to darken up the shadows even more. I want those shadows to be real noticeable. I'm just going to add a little bit more with the 70% down here. Just 
make it a little bit darker. Sticking with the 70% actually because I didn't pull out any other grays. I went straight from the 70% to the 20%. So I'm just going to use this to just go over where I want it. Just a little bit darker than the lightest gray. Not going as dark as I did in the shadows. I'm just going to go over top of this with the lightest gray and that will kind of make it its own color. So light me up really, really light here. I want this to be kind of a little bit of a highlight right there. going to grab, let's see, I think for this one I want to go with the cool gray, so let's grab that. So I'm just going to start coming in, kind of going over pretty much everything, just not our super dark area, I don't want to go over that too much. Again, not trying to completely burnish it, I just want to get rid of most of the white. Okay, there we go. And while it doesn't look too shiny, I want to age it a little bit more, but I think I'm going to use the bronze to do that. So I'm going to grab the bronze, and then I'm just going to add this into some random areas. Just really light. I think for the most part, though, I'm going to stick closer to some of the shadowed areas. Just like that. And now I'm trying to debate if I want to do the frame of this the same or with the bronzy kind of color. I think it'd look weird with the bronzy color, but I'm not sure. I think I'm going to keep it the same. Kind of play it safe a little bit. So I'm going to come in with the 90% warm gray. Do the same thing as I did before, so I'm just going to create a shadow here, not too dark, kind of a medium pressure, fade it out. Okay, and then I think I used 
Um, I don't know if I use the warm gray or the cool gray, but I'm just going to grab the 70% cool gray. That's warm. I'm going to bring this up a little bit, go over everything, fade it out as we go up. Still not completely burnishing that, just lightly going over it and then See, I think I use the cool gray for these ones, but let's opt for the 20% warm gray for this one, even if it looks slightly different. As long as it looks similar. So I'm just going to use this to go over and burnish pretty much everything. And then, same as before, I'm going to grab the jasmine and put a little bit of that in as well. There, we should have just enough time to finish this bit, which I'm going to do in kind of a silver as well, but I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So, starting again with the 70% warm grey. This bit here is going to be in shadow. And then I also imagine that this part is laying over top of this one. So I'm going to shadow this up a little bit too. This is just going to be a really slight shadow though. So I'm going to run it right along the edge and just kind of fade it out immediately. This one I'm going to bring down just slightly. I feel like this would be a little bit of a bigger shadow. That said 70%, that's, oh my goodness, that is what I used. I wanted the 90%. Okay, so I'm just going to come in with the 90% now. <laughs> and over top of that. Oops. Oh well. I was going to blend it out into the 70% anyways, so not too bad. shadow in underneath this bowl. Hey Miko! Hey pretty girl! Okay and then again in with the 70% warm. I'm gonna go pretty solid at first and then I'm gonna start fading this out and I want to fade it out quite a ways. I'll just fade it out over everything, just really light there. And then I know I said I want this to be Silver, but I'm going to come in with a little bit of bronze. Sorry if you can hear the crazy little man. I'm just going to lightly throw a little bit of that in as well. Again, mostly around the shadows, and I'm going to fade it out. Okay, Missy, that is not your food. Grab the 70% again, if I can find it here. I'm 
just going to fade out a little bit darker now over top of that bronze. Outside the door doing that. <laughs> I want this to be really dark, but I don't just want to use the two colors. So I'm just going to try and make the 70% warm gray look as different as I can. Kind of fade it out at different different shades and then we'll come in with the 20% warm gray and just go over everything I suppose or maybe not quite everything but go over quite a bit Box, did you, little miss? Sorry for the sound. <laughs> as you all know, my art room doubles as the cat room, so can't really be helped. I'm just gonna go over this whole area. This probably actually should have been shadowed, but oh well. I'm not gonna worry about it. I think how we'll fix that is I'll take a little bit of the dark umber here. And I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in to kinda. Add a little bit of a shadow and also help for that kind of aged look that we're going for. So a little bit of the dark umber and then let's see a little bit of the green ochre. My goodness, you are loud. Also get this fin done in this part and then we'll call it good. So for the fin I kind of want to do a mixture of these colors so as always I'm going to start off with the 90% warm gray This is actually the 90% warm gray this time. So I'm going to start on these kind of thicker pieces here. Put in a little bit of a shadow and then fade it up. Lightly, I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow in here too. Not quite as dark as on these thicker pieces. Okay, so then I want to come in with the 70% warm. 
on these bits here. Just gonna blend that in to the darker gray and fade it out. And then I'm gonna come in with the green ochre. Kind of go over all of it. Beat it up. Okay, and then the bronze. We'll finish these off. Okay, and these I want to make lighter. So I'm going to grab the 70% the cool gray and come in over top of that 90% that we put down. And I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to kind of bring it up randomly. So I'm not going to make it even on all of these little lines here. I'm going to make it uneven actually and that's just going to make it look a little bit more interesting. We don't have too much room to work with here though. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with a 70% warm. This is pretty much burnished, but I just want to add a tiny bit more shadow at the bottom. In with the 70% cool gray. I'm just gonna bring this up just slightly. And then we'll come in with the cool gray and finish coloring it. And just add a little bit of age to this. I'm going to grab the jasmine. And again, just kind of randomly popping it in there. So that is what we have so far. I think it's turning out really good. I can't wait to see it finished once we add those little metallic gel pin bits in there and highlights. And I have an interesting idea for the background. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. And I think it's going to be good. I'm super excited. Hopefully you guys are too. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in part two. Okay, take care guys. Bye! Where are you going?